Hello everybody. I decided to share with you some conclusions, that I draw after a few months of studying the car thermal engines and their transmissions. First of all, I'll speak about my project, so you can better understand the reasons why I came to these conclusions. In early 2016, I made an online calculator and comparator for tire dimensions, based on their codes. The reason for doing that was that I needed a fast tool to compare tire diameters, in order to choose enhancing performance dimension of tires for rally sprint. Then I did an online, tire friction force calculator based on its tread wear number, that shows only the friction force, the adherence being composed of, friction force and other components generated by the tire profile and elasticity. After that, in order to choose a cheap old stock car for rally, I made an online car transmission calculator and comparator, which I developed and improved through a period of several months. The results of this calculator, helped me draw the conclusions I'll be presenting you in this video. While I was improving the transmission calculator, I realized that I can do an online car cost calculator, and that's what I did. It shows the real cost of owning and using a car and it is under the form money per 100 kilometers. And finally, because I am a former performance cyclist and I was often asked the question, how should I use the bike's gears, I made an online bicycle transmission calculator, but this will not be the subject of this video. You can find the link to these online calculators and comparators in the below description. And now, about the subject of this video, power, torque, force, mass, and acceleration. Isaac Newton's laws of motion are three physical laws that, together, laid the foundation for classical mechanics. They describe the relationship between a body and the forces acting upon it, and its motion in response to those forces. Newton's second law states that force is equal to mass multiplied by acceleration. These will be the base things we will look upon, when talking about the dynamics of a car. Now let's explain the other physical terms. Power, from the force and acceleration point of view, is nothing but a formula. Watts equals Newton's meter multiplied by radians per second. This can be transformed in other measuring units like horsepower etc. Torque, is force multiplied by arm length. Its measuring unit is Newton meter. The torque graph or curve in relation with rotational speed, is given by the manufacturer but can be also deduced by measuring the force at the traction wheel circumference on a dynamometer. That force is the traction force, and, according to Newton's second law, it should be the number one interest for us. You can find more detailed explanations about power and torque on Wikipedia. Now let me tell you my conclusions. 1. The human body can feel only forces when a car accelerates. It cannot feel power, nor torque. 2. Horsepower mislead the people's opinion about power since 1781, when James Watt patented a steam engine that produced continuous rotary motion. I bet many people think that their cars have hundreds of horses aligned in front of it. Wrong. If we are to assume the same principle as what did, the horse force can be defined as 735 newtons. Consequently, for example, 107 horsepower can equal only maximum 10.6 horse force in first gear. 3. In physics, power is not synonymous with force. Consequently, horsepower is not synonymous with its perception in people's minds, horse force. Four. The only information that the maximum power can give us, if we know the power's formula, is an irrelevant torque value at an elevated RPM, nothing more, unless we think of the illusion of horses in front of our car. 5. In an ideal environment, the power at the flywheel is equal with the one at the wheel. This, among the one that horsepower creates mislead, is the second reason why the power was, or still is, used to describe the thermal engine's characteristics. 6. The traction force at the maximum torque's RPM is bigger than the force at the maximum power's RPM. Consequently, the same thing can be said about the acceleration. 7. The maximum power doesn't give the shifting RPM, neither is the maximum torque. 
The shifting RPM is given by the torque curve and gear ratios, as you can see here, the gold colored lines must be as near as possible to the horizontal. 8. So, power is a denatured mirroring of force and acceleration in thermal engines regard. My advice to you is, stop using power to describe a thermal engine's dynamic characteristics. Use torque instead, and if you talk about the engine plus transmission as a unit, use force and acceleration. For more videos check out my YouTube channel.